Miss Joyce, I am here to discuss to you about the lymphatic disorder. But first, let me review to you about the lymphatic system. In a nutshell, the lymphatic system is the drainage system that removes excess fluid from the body tissues and returns it to the bloodstream. It is actually a solid system of both the circulatory and the immune system. The major purpose of the circulatory system is to bring the oxygen and nutrients to the body tissues and remove weight. This exchange happens in the smallest blood vessels called the capillaries. Blood plasma containing nutrients moves out of capillaries at the arterial end of the capillary bed, while the tissue fluid containing waste reabsorbs back in at the venous end. However, not all the fluid is drawn back to the bloodstream at this point. About 15% of it is left in the tissues and would cause swelling if left accumulated. This is where the lymphatic system comes into play. The lymphatic system picks up excess fluid and returns it to the circulatory system. Unlike the blood circulatory system, which is a closed loop, the lymphatic system is a one-direction, open-ended network of vessels. Lymphatic vessels begin at lymphatic capillaries made of overlapping endothelial cells. The overlapping flaps function as a one-way valve. When fluid accumulates in the tissue, interstitial pressure increases, pushing the flaps inward, opening the gaps between cells, allowing fluid to flow in. As pressure inside the capillaries increases, the endothelial cells are pressed outward, closing the gap, thus preventing blood flow. Unlike blood capillaries, the gap in lymphatic capillaries are so large that they allow bacteria, immune cells such as macrophages, and other large particles to enter. This makes the lymphatic system a useful way for large particles to reach the bloodstream. It is used, for example, for dietary fat absorption in the intestine. Once inside lymphatic vessels, the recovered fluid is called lymph. Lymph flow is enabled by the same forces that facilitate blood flow in the veins. It goes from lymphatic capillaries to larger and larger and larger lymphatic vessels and eventually drains into the bloodstream via the subclavian vein. On the way, it passes through a number of lymph nodes which serves as filters cleansing the fluid before it reaches to the bloodstream. Lymph nodes are small bean-shaped structures scattered throughout the lymphatic network. They are most prominent in the areas where the vessel converge. Lymph nodes contain macrophages and dendritic cells that directly swallow up any pathogens, such as bacteria or viruses that may have been taken up from an infected tissue. They also contain lymphocytes, T cell and B cell which are involved in adaptive immune response. A process that produces activated lymphocytes and antibodies is specific to the invading pathogens. These are carried by the limbs to the bloodstream to be distributed where are they are needed. The lymphatic system also includes lymphoid organs. Primary lymphoid organs, the thymus, the bone marrow, are the site of lymphocyte production, maturation, and selection. Selection is the process in which lymphocytes learn to distinguish between self and non-self so they can recognize and destroy pathogens without attacking the body's own cells. Mature lymphocytes then leave the primary for the secondary lymphoid organs, the lymph nodes, spleen, and lymphoid nodules where they encounter pathogens and become activated. Lymphatic system has four functions. It maintains fluid levels the body, absorb fats from digestive tracts, protect the body against foreign invaders, and transport and remove waste products and abnormal cells from the lymph. So, um, let me discuss to you the the different parts of the lymphatic system. First is the tonsil. So, the tonsil is these are the body's first line defense against the foreign invader. So, next is the red bone marrow or the bone marrow. So, the, it is the responsible for the production of white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. And next is spleen. So. The um, spleen, it, it 
filters and stores blood as well as it produces white blood cells that fight against the infection or the diseases. So next is the appendix. So appendix is it contains a um, lymphoid tissue that can destroy bacteria before it reaches in the intestine wall during the absorption. Next is the collecting duct or the thoracic duct. It empties the lymph and connects to the subclavian vein here which return the lymph into the bloodstream and it helps to maintain the normal blood pressure or the normal volume as well as it prevents the it prevents the excess fluid from around the tissue or what we call the edema. Next is the thymus gland. So the thymus gland is um, it matures a specific type of white blood cells that fight off against the foreign organism. So we are uh, I we also have here um, auxiliary lymph nodes, um, the cervical lymph node here. Next is the inguinal lymph node as well as popliteal lymph node. And now let's talk about the different types of the lymphatic disorder. First, let me discuss to you the lymphangitis. Lymphangitis is defined as inflammation of the lymph channels resulting to an infection at a site distal to the channel or the extremity. Microorganism invades in the lymphatic vessels then spreads into the regional lymph nodes causing an inflammation of the lymphatic vessels which may be used as a reservoir of the bacteria to rapidly grow in the lymphatic system. We can see here that there's a red streak here, so it is one of the symptoms of the lymphangitis. And it extends in the arms and legs from, the, from an infected wound, outline the lymphatic vessels as they drain. Lymph vessel is a network of capillaries and large network of tubes located throughout the body that transport lymph away from tissue. It collects, transport, and filter lymph as it continues to move towards a larger vessel. It is work the same like veins. They work under very low pressure, have series of valves or a one-way valve in them to keep fluid in one direction. As we zoom in here this picture, this color green is what we call the lymphatic vessels. And here, it has a lymphatic valve or a one-way valve wherein the lymphatic vessel moving freely to the vessels. Next is the lymphadenitis. So lymphadenitis is a localized infection or an inflammation of the lymph nodes or the glands caused by the invasion of the bacteria, virus, or an fungi. It may be generalized involving a number of lymph nodes or limited to a few nodes in the area of the localized infection. So the lymph nodes are bean shaped glands that monitor and cleanse the lymph as it filters through them. It has 600 lymph nodes scattered throughout the body. The nodes filter out the damaged cells and cancer cells produce and store lymphocytes and other immune system cells that attack and destroy bacteria and other harmful substances they do it. So this is an example of the lymph node structures. So the etiology or the causes of the lymphangitis is skin injury, mostly acute streptococcal infection, less frequently from the staphylococcal infection. Group A beta hemolytic streptococcal or the GAB HS, Pasteurelia multiceda or the dog and cat's bite. Wuchereria Bancrofti and systemic illnesses like children with diabetes, immunodeficiency, rather, varicella, chronic use of the steroid. The etiology and the causes of the lymphadenitis is most commonly streptococcal and the staphylococcal. Protozoa, rickettsiae, fungi, as well as tuberculosis bacillus, children with tonsillitis, bacteria sore throat, viruses, as well as disease or disorder involve lymph nodes such as rabbit fever, cut scratch disease, lymphogranuloma venereum, cancroid, 
genital herpes, infected acne, dental abscess, as well as the bubonic plaque. The pathophysiology of the lymphangitis and lymphadenitis in the lymphatic system, the pathogenic organism will invade. It breaks in in the skin barrier, causing an inflammation of the lymph channels, or what we call lymphangitis. It extends proximally, causing an inflammation of the lymph nodes, or the lymphadenitis. The lymph nodes will um, will fight against the microorganism, but later on, it will destroy due to the increased number of the uh, microorganism invasion, causing the uh, resulting to bacteria rapidly grow in the lymphatic system. So the complication will be cellulitis, bacteris, bacteris, bacteremia rather, sepsis, as well as the abscess. So the clinical manifestation for lymphangitis in, is red streak. In the red streak, the, in the affected area nearest to the lymph nodes, the, it will be tender and warm. It, it, um, it will be red, swollen, and painful. Next is fevers and chills, muscle ache, loss of appetite, headache, malaise, blister. Um, it will also create a blister in the affected area. Abscess, which the infected wound or the area of the cells you like it as well as the probing pain in the affected area. The diagnostic procedure is culture and sensitivity. It refers to laboratory techniques that allow a disease causing microorganism to be identified a culture be identified rather. A culture is a test to find a bacteria or fungus that can cause infection while the sensitivity is a test that checks to see what kind of medicine will work best to treat the illness or the infection. Next is the biopsy. It is a procedure wherein the doctor removes a small amount of tissue or sample of the cell from the body to examine and analyze under a microscope so that to make a diagnostic. So, and the biopsy is to reveal the cause of the swelling. Next is the blood culture. So the blood culture is, is a procedure done to detect an infection in the blood and identify the cause and, as well as it verify if the infection has been transferred in the blood. Next is the complete blood count or the CBC. It is a blood test that is used to evaluate the overall health and detects a wide range of disorder. It measures several components and features the blood includes RBC, which carry oxygen and show the presence of the leukocytes. The treatment modalities for the lymphangitis is first is the antibiotics. So the antibiotics, it helps stop the infection caused by the bacteria. Analgesics, it used to relieve the pain. And said is it helped to reduce the inflammation, which also helped to relieve pain. Next is the warm and moist heat, so it will help to reduce swelling and control the pain, as well as the elevation and immobilization of the affected area. So it will be reduce the inflammation as well as the pain. So the clinical manifestation for lymphadenitis is fever pain, swollen, or enlarged lymph node. The diagnostic and laboratory procedure for lymphadenitis is ultrasound. So the ultrasound, it helps to image and produce a picture of the inside of the body. The CT scan or MRI, it is used to produce a clear or clearer images and the pictures of the organ or the tissue. Next is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So it is a test to detect inflammation associated with the infection. Next is this chest x-ray. It is a non-invasive medical test that helps the physician or the doctor to diagnose and treat medical conditions as well as it produce an image or pictures of the organs. 
Next is the serological test. So it is a test to look for antibodies in the blood. Next is the fine needle aspiration. So it is a long thin needle is inserted into the suspicious area and then a syringe is used to draw out of fluid and cells for analysis. It helps, it helps to make a diagnose or rule out a condition. CBC with differential, it, it is used to diagnose and monitor many different conditions. The treatment modalities for lymphadenitis is incision drainage with proper evacuation, antitubular antibiotic, hat moist compress, resting the affected area, elastic compression, stocking or sleeve, as well as the antibiotics. Prognosis in lymphangitis, it has a good prognosis with uncomplicated lymphangitis. Immediate treatment with antibiotic can result in a complete recovery, though it takes weeks or months to disappear the swelling. The amount of time until recovery, of course, varies depending on the underlying cause. Prognosis in lymphadenitis is good if the patient is treated promptly with antibiotics. On most cases, the infection can be brought under control in 3 to 4 days. However, in some cases, it may take weeks or months for swelling to disappear. The length of recovery depends on the underlying cause of the infection. If left untreated, it leads to develop complications such as abscesses, cellulitis, or septicemia. So the nursing diagnosis for lymphadenitis and lymphangitis is risk for infection related to tissue obstruction associated with invasive procedures. Next is the alteration and comfort related to information of the lymph nodes as evidenced by irritability, facial grimace, and inability to sleep. The nursing intervention is first, note risk factor for occurrence of infection. Observe the localized sign of infection at insertion site and surgical incision or wounds. Assess the level of pain by observation. Monitor the vital signs. Acknowledge the pain experience and convey acceptance of patient's response to pain. It, uh, provide the comfort measures and calm activities. Administer medication as ordered and instruct precautions regarding medication regimen as well as note the patient response. Next is encourage adequate rest period and sleep to the patient. Next lymphatic disorder I'm going to discuss is lymph edema. Lymph edema is a localized form of tissue swelling resulting from excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space due to a damage of the lymphatic system. It is result from a blockage in the lymphatic system caused by a scar tissue from a damage of the lymph vessels or nodes. It also often seen when lymph nodes are removed in persons who have had a surgery and or radiation to remove a cancer. It is most commonly seen in the arms and legs. It can be very mild or quite painful disfiguring and disabling. People with lymph edema are at risk for serious and potentially life-threatening deep skin infection. There are stages of lymph edema. The stage 1 is the latent. You will observe a lymphatic damage or no lymph edema. Stage 2 is the spontaneously reversible. You will notice or observe a pitting edema in her or his extremities. Next is stage 3, spontaneously irreversible. You will observe a non pitting edema as well as the fibrosis. Stage 4 is the lymphostatic elephantiasis. Swelling or irreversible, limbs are very large and hardened. In this picture, you will notice the signs and symptoms whether in stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, as well as the stage 4. Next is they are two classification of causes or etiology of the lymphedema. 
first, let me discuss to you the primary, or it is not caused by other diseases, such as congenital or Milroy's disease. The eye disorder lymphatics not developing right. Lymphedema precox or the Magase disease is developed before age 35. Lymphedema tarda is it developed after age of 35. Next is the associated with Turner syndrome. The secondary or filariasis or nematode infection, accident, surgery, or when the when a patient get a surgery or removal of the lymph nodes, chronic venous insufficiency, cancer malignancy such as primary lymphoma, metastatic tumor cells, as well as the cancer treatment. The pathophysiology of the lymphedema is in the lymphatic system there is a repeated infection causing a fibrosis. Then the lymphatic vessels will obstruct or there is a blockage, causing the lymphatic hypertension and distension. Then the proteinized fluid will accumulate into the tissue, causing the chronic swelling or there is a, an increase of production of collagen, creating a frequent infection and inflammation, resulting to a thickening of the subcutaneous and the hypertrophy of the skin. So the complication will be lymphangiosarcoma, infections such as cellulitis and lymphangitis. The clinical manifestation for lymphedema is swelling of arms and legs, fibrosis, restricted range of motion, feeling of heaviness and tightness, as well as a aching or discomfort. The diagnostic procedure for lymphedema or MRI scan. So the MRI scan it produces a 3D as well as high frequency or high resolution images. The CT scan it, it produces a detailed cross-sectional images of the body structure as well as it reveals a blockage in the lymphatic system. Lymphocentigraphy. It is a it is used to identify the sentinel lymph nodes or the first node to receive the lymph drainage from a tumor. During the test, the patient will inject a radio dye and then scanned by a machine. The resulting image show the dye moving through the lymph vessel or the, it's highlighting a blockage in the lymph the lymphatic system. In Doppler ultrasound, this variation conventional ultrasound look at the blood flow and pressure by bouncing high frequency sound waves off by the red blood cells. This ultrasound can help the finding the obstruction. Treatment modality. There's no cure for lymphedema. It's only focusing on reducing the swelling and controlling the pain. First, let me discuss to you the compression bandage or the compression stocking. It is a, the bandaging the entire limbs encourages the lymph fluid to flow back toward the trunk of the body. The bandage should be tightest around the fingers or toes and looseness it moves up the arm and leg. A therapy may show how to wrap it. Um, the the function of the compressive bandage or the stocking it is to improve the lymph flow. Flexi touch it is a tough cell device. It is to stimulate the lymphatic system. A dynamic pressure encourages the fluid to move the remaining healthy lymphatic vessel. It is to reduce the fibrosis and painful cellulitis infection as well as the edema. Surgery. It is only applicable if the edema is severe and uncontrolled by the medical therapy. It involves an excision of the affected subcutaneous tissue or fascia with skin grafting, as well as a buried dermal flaps. The, uh, the dermal flaps is, is to provide a conduit for lymphatic drainage. Next is pneumo pneumotic compression. 
So, in pneumatic compression, is a sleeve worn over the affected arm or leg connects to a pump that intermittently inflates the sleeve. Putting pressure on the limb and moving limb fluid away from the fingers or and toes. The function or the why, the why pneumatic compression is it is to reduce the accumulation of the fluid. Next is complete decongestive therapy. So it involves combining therapies with lifestyle changes. It isn't recommended for people who have high blood pressure, diabetes, paralysis, heart failure, blood clots, or acute infections. Exercises. Light exercises in which the patient move the affected lymph may encourage lymph fluid drainage and it helps prepare the client for the everyday tasks such as the carrying the groceries. Exercises shouldn't be strenuous or tire the patient but should focus on a gentle contraction of the muscle in the arm or legs. A therapy can or a therapist can teach the can teach the patient on how to do it so that it, the exercise may help to the condition. Next lymphatic disorder I'm going to talk about is the elephantiasis. So elephantiasis it is also known as lymphatic filariasis. It impairs the lymphatic system and can lead to the abnormal enlargement of body parts, causing pain, severe disability, and social stigma. It occurs to uh, when a filarial parasites are transmitted to humans through a mosquito. It is usually acquired in childhood, causing hidden damage to the lymphatic system. The global baseline estimate of people affected by the lymphatic filariasis was 25 million men with hydrocil and over 15 million people with lymph edema. 36 million remain with chronic disorder or disease manifestation. The etiology or the causes of the elephantiasis is Bucherea bancrofti. It is responsible for 90% of the cases. The Brugia Timori as well as the Brugia Malayi. So the Brugia Malayi is most of the remainder of the patient or the cases. Cases involves or colex. So the colex is a carrier of viral encephalitis and in tropical or subtropical climate of the filariasis. The eggs laying may occur on almost any body of fresh water, includes the stagnant or the standing polluted water. Next is the anophilus. So in the anophilus, it's also known carrier of the malaria, also transmit filariasis um, and encephalitis. Eggs laying usually occurs in water containing heavy vegetation. Last is the Aedes. So the Aedes it carries pathogens that cause yellow fever, dengue, Zika fever, as well as the encephalitis. The eggs laying in flood, water, rainfalls, or salt marshal, marshes. Rather. And eggs are capable of withstanding long periods of dryness. The pathophysiology of the elephantiasis, if the mosquito bites, the infection will enter into the local lymphatics and lymph nodes. Then, there's a death of worms spontaneously or due to drought, causing a filarial adenolymphangitis. Then, there's a adenolymphatic obstruction, causing an accumulation of the fluid into the tissues, then resulting to lymph edema. Then, after the lymph edema, there's a recurrent attack of the acute adenoidermatolymphangitis, then causing and multiple levels of site of obstruction, or there's a addition of inflammatory exudate to the edema fluid. Then it will, then it will cause the activation of the keratinocyte, resulting to a fibrous proliferation, includes the subdermal fibrosis. Cause the, uh, it will lead to lymphedema and fibre edema, then resulting to the elephantiasis. The 
complication of elephantiasis is disability as well as the emotional distress. The clinical manifestation for elephantiasis, majority of the infections are asymptomatic. Or some are caused by the damage of the lymphatic system, kidney, or alteration of the body's immune system. But some are elephantiasis of breast and genitals, hydrocele, it is the swelling in the scrotum that occurs when fluid collects in the thin shot surrounding a testicle. Next is the hyperkeratosis. It is a dry, thick skin and ulcerated. Fevers and chills as well as the malaise. The diagnostic and laboratory procedure for elephantiasis first is filariasis test strip. It is a rapid diagnostic tool used for the qualitative detection of the washerian cross the antigen in the human blood sample collected by a finger prick. The test is relatively simple to use. Adequate training is necessary to reduce the inter-observer variability and reduce the misreading of the strip. Next is the biopsy. The biopsy is often the Text a adult form, but this approach is rarely used as a diagnostic procedure for the yes. Next is the circulating filarial antigen. It is regarded as a golden standard for the diagnosing of the most common Wachiria van Krosti infection. The specificity is excellent and sensitivity is greater than that the achievable by the earlier parasite detection assay. It also equally applicable to clinical or field evaluation of the Bacrophian filariasis infection. Ultrasound, so the ultrasound in scrotal lymphatic in men and breast, as well as the retroperitoneal lymphatic in women, can reveal a rapidly moving out, moving adult work. Lymphocentigraphy, it is, it is identify the lymphatic functional and gross anatomical abnormality. X-ray, it's rarely helpful in diagnostic lymphatic filarial infection, except in the case of the tropical eosinophilia, where the picture can be variable but characteristically includes interstitial thickening and diffuse nodular mottling in the lung field. The treatment modalities for elephantiasis is antiparasitic drugs such as albendazole or the mixtixan. Diuretics such as the lasix, elevating the affected areas, good hygiene, this is important in the elephantiasis, as well as the exercise. The prognosis in lymphedema is, the prognosis is quite poor. A cure is rarely achieved once lymphedema occurs. Meticulous treatment and preventive measures can help lessen the symptoms, such as slow or stop disease, progression, and prevention of the complication. Those patients with chronic lymphedema for 10 years have 10% risk in develop in a lymphangio sarcoma. Highly aggressive, which require a radical amputation of the involved extremities, and 5 years survival is less than 10 percent. The prognosis for elephantiasis is good if the infection is recognized and treated as early as possible. This disease is rarely fatal but the consequence can cause not only physical disabled as well as the patient will suffer significant personal, mental and social and socio-economic hardship that contributes to stigma and poverty for those who are affected. The nursing diagnosis will be impaired physical mobility related to pain secondary to lymph edema as evidenced by pitting edema in large and swollen legs. Next is the impaired skin integrity related to inflammatory response secondary to systemic infection as evidenced by the hyperkeratosis. The nursing intervention will be note factors affecting current situation and potential time in both. Assess the patient's motor skills, ease, and capability of the movement. Assess degree of pain, 
listening to patient description about the manner in which pain limits the mobility. Assess nutritional status of the patient and encourage as well as emphasize the importance of adequate intake of fluids as well as the nutritious food. Assess the skin and noted color, trigger as well as the sensation. Demonstrate good skin hygiene example wash thoroughly and pat dry carefully. Schedule activities with adequate rest period during the day and identify energy conserving techniques for the ADL. Administer medication prior to activities for pain as ordered. Provide and apply wound dressings carefully as well as support affected body parts using a pillow. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope you learned something.